Hello and welcome back to another video by yours truly. So today's video is going to be about this beautiful Seiko SNZH57K1, otherwise known as the Seiko Blancpain 50 Fathoms. So it is called that way because it is heavily inspired by the Blancpain 50 Fathom series, inspired by it but not a complete overall uh, ripoff and homage of this watch. It is only inspired by it, I, as you can see from the side and side pictures. Looks like it, but not exactly the same, which is the way I like it because I do not like, you know, complete copies of uh, more popular watches, uh, let's say by those AliExpress brands, for example. So we have this beautiful Seiko SNZH57. We're going to go through the unboxing the specification as well as to answer the question should you buy this watch for yourself so we're gonna go through some b-roll footage and proceed with the unboxing experience So as for the unboxing experience, we have a white Seiko cardboard box as well as the watch and its black pillow inside of the box as well as the tag and the extra links. I bought this watch used so I don't have the warranty card or the user manual for it. If you were to buy this new, uh, which I would highly doubt you would still be able to because this uh, whole series has been discontinued, you'll probably be getting the warranty card as well as a user manual on how to operate this watch inside of the box. As I said before, this watch has been discontinued. So on the used market, you can typically find this watch for around $150 to $200. I wouldn't pay for more than $250 for this watch because uh, it is a pretty old watch and it does run on a outdated movement so uh, unless you really like the look of this watch i wouldn't spend more than uh, 250 dollars on this watch right here in terms of specifications it has a 42 millimeter case 47 and a half lug to lug as well as 14 millimeters of thickness it has 100 meter water resist with a push pull crown it doesn't have a screw down crown uh, it has the Seiko 7S36 movement, which is basically the same thing as the 7S26 with two useless extra jewels that does absolutely nothing. So basically it is the same movement as those old cheap Seiko 5s out there with the 7S26. So it's the 7S36, basically the same thing as the 7S26. So we have a uh, 22 millimeter uh, lug width with a bracelet with hollow end links and a press clasp. So this is not the best bracelet out there. I've actually only worn this watch on this bracelet once. I mostly wear it on this Tropic strap right here that I will put on later on in the video to show you guys. So on my six and a half inch wrist, it doesn't look too bad. It actually looks very nice. A very appropriate size for a dive style watch, uh, 42 millimeters. It's a very nice uh, size. The compact lug to lug of 47 and a half uh, makes it uh, wear not bad on my six and a half inch wrist as you can see from the picture right here so it doesn't look too bad on my wrist and um very nice vintage style especially with the gold and black indices and also with this like blanc pan 50 fathom look very nice right here so the 7s 36 movement basically the same thing as the 7s 26 movement it does not have hacking nor hand winding as it has about 40 hour power reserve my units runs about 20 seconds slow uh, per day uh, probably needs a regulation or a little service because uh, this is a pretty old watch and I have no clue what this watch has been been through because I bought this watch used. So typical operation of these 7S26 movements, you have uh, two positions on the crown. We're just going to put it on the safe zone right here. So first position, you can change the date and the day as well as the second position, you can change the time. As you can see, as I change the time, the second hand still keeps running because it does not have hacking. I have been spoiled with better, you know, movements lately with hacking and hand winding. I'm definitely not used to, you know, turning this crown and nothing happening right here. Just, just, just like blows my mind a little bit because I'm so not used to it nowadays because all my other watches have hacking and hand winding, but it is not something that is not, you know, super important to me because Anyways, this watch is not that accurate anyways. So if you do set it to the correct time, it will like slow down and you have to set it every couple days to make sure that you have, you know, the right time. Uh, one thing that you can do, like sometimes when I'm lazy, instead of setting the exact second, I would just set the exact minute, right? So let's say I will sync it to uh, maybe my G-Shock right here that is synced to the atomic time. So when it's approaching, let's say, you know, uh, 48 right here, I'm just going to align it to the 48 on this watch 
uh, the the with the minute hand instead of the, with the second hand if you can understand what i mean right here with that little babble so very nice watch the only thing is this you know radically uh cheap bracelet it does have like solid links but as you can see it does have these lines here in the middle it's probably a piece of metal that has been folded onto itself so not you know the most solid links and obviously the hollow end links and the press clasp just adds to the cheapness of this bracelet so this is why i have never really worn this watch on that bracelet i pro mostly wear it on a tropic strap right here that i will put on uh, later on in the video to show you guys so it has a 120 click unidirectional bezel luckily on my unit it the bezel aligns perfectly no problem uh, there's no loom on the bezel there is loom on the hands and these tiny little looms right here um on the inside of the dial. I'm gonna show you the loom shot shortly. So this is what the loom looks like. As you can see, there is loom on the second hand as well as the other hands and a little bit of loom on every single indice. So it's not like a dive watch type loom. Uh, it is Seiko's Lumi Bright. It is not, you know, super bright because there is not a ton of loom on all of these indices, but the hands you will at least be able to see no problem. Another little like quote unquote feature that I really like about this watch is that um, the hands are kind of semi-transparent, especially the minute hand right here. The loom is applied in a thin layer that is uh, almost transparent and you can see behind it. You can see the indices behind this uh, minute hand right here. I don't know if it shows on the camera, but uh, oh, maybe maybe right here. You'll see it right here. This, you can see the logo behind it on the minute hand because it is actually, you know, semi-transparent and it's actually a very nice look. I've never seen a watch with a semi-transparent hand before and I think it's a very nice, cool uh, thing to look at when you're bored. You know, it's very nice. So I put it on um, this tropic strap and this is how i typically wear this watch because i do not like the look of the oem bracelet very nice super comfortable tropic strap i can link you down in the description below it is a tropic strap from aliexpress that costs about three to four dollars so pretty cheap tropic strap so very nice looking uh watch right here and super comfortable especially on this tropic strap uh this watch has been discontinued so if you can you're able to find this watch in a pretty good condition used uh, at a fairly good price, I'd say like 100, maybe to 250 maximum. 250, you'd expect it to be completely mint new though. Uh, 100 to 200 is, is per about what I'd pay for it used. I found this watch on Facebook Marketplace. I did a trade for this watch. Uh, as I said before, uh, this series, this Seiko SNZH 50 Fathoms uh, inspired watch series from Seiko has been discontinued. So you cannot buy this new anymore. Maybe you can buy some old new stock uh at uh, on ebay or something but uh, it's rare to find these watches new these days so if you can find one on facebook marketplace i think it could be a pretty good buy if you especially if you could get it at a good price because uh seiko doesn't make these kind of watches anymore none of the modern seikos look like this and i don't think they're gonna try to make another one of these like blanc pan 50 fathom homage watches anytime soon so if you can find it on your local facebook marketplace or kijiji i would highly advise you to go check it out at least uh uh, buy it if it is at a good price because it is, it is a very nice wearing watch and especially if you put it on a tropic strap like this or maybe sometimes a leather strap i've seen the, these watches on leather straps it could look very nice the oem bracelet kind of sucks though but that is to be expected from a cheap uh, old seiko 5 they never uh, were well known for their bracelets anyway so hopefully you enjoyed this video and of course do not hesitate to ask down in the comment section below if you have any questions regarding this watch and uh, please do not forget to click that subscribe button because I am going to be giving out a watch of 1,000 subscribers. So please do not hesitate to click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what's going to be coming up next, uh, these two watches are coming up next. So I did a little mod right here on the Seiko Tuna and I also found a really nice bracelet for the Seiko SRPK17. So if you want to know what's coming next, please do not hesitate to click that subscribe button, smash that subscribe button and that like button. And uh, thank you very much for watching till the end and until next time.